Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video about the update on the Oracle database in Azabix, starting with a 7.0 and especially starting with a Zabbix 7.2. So most of you like who are using Zabbix probably already know that Oracle was always supported as a backend database, so the database for the Zabbix server and also for the Zabbix proxy. But there are some problems. There always was some problems. As example, like whether or not you want to deploy uh, the Zabbix server, let's say with the Oracle database support, and you would go to the Zabbix.com, click on a big green download button, search for the Zabbix packages, choose the version of your favor, uh, operating system distribution version, whatever, whatever, you will not find a database with a Oracle. So Essentially, there was never official packages for Oracle database as a backend, only for MySQL and a Postgres. And uh, same applies like to many, many things uh, that uh, Oracle as a backend database is using, but Zabbix did not necessarily use them. So essentially, there were many problems caused exactly by using the Oracle database, which sometimes wasn't really like a choice of the user or someone who installs the Zabbix. Pretty often it could be just the policy of the company so that whether if uh, the software you want to deploy actually supports the Oracle, then you must use Oracle just because that's the number one choice within the company and maybe you have some Oracle DBAs and whatever. But again, from my humble experience, usually like Oracle DBA will not help you to solve all of the problems that could happen uh, with your Oracle database. But this video is not about the all the problems and then all the crap that can happen with the Oracle database. This video is about the change which came along with a Zabbix 7.0 LTS version, which maybe was not like focused and emphasized too much in some social posts or whatever. But basically, starting since the Zabbix version 7.0, which is already released for a month and a week, so five weeks in total, Oracle database is deprecated, which means the support of the Oracle as a backend database has been deprecated and is expected to be completely removed in the future versions. So it works right now in the 7.0 LTS. And if you're a big enterprise and you want to settle down on the LTS version, you're more or less safe for like next five years because LTS version is going to be supported for five years. And a Zabbix 7.0 does support a Oracle database as a backend. But whenever the 7.2 comes, like it's gone, like no more Oracle database, which means that if you already have it, if you're using Oracle as a backend, you need to think about how and where you want to migrate away your database because like, okay, uh, well, despite the fact that Oracle will be gone, uh, most likely you will continue to use the Zabbix. And to do that, you actually need to decide whether or not you want to switch to the MySQL or you want to switch to the Postgres SQL. My guess is that, uh, I don't know, actually, both options are good. Uh, I think the Postgres was like more, um, a more native or I know similar to the Oracle. So perhaps the choice might come to the that. Uh, but uh, also the one thing to mention is uh, like why it happened. Why for so many years the Oracle database was supported, which is the enterprise grade database and so many big companies are using the Oracle. So why in the world would Zabbix stop, stop to support this database engine? And the answer is like, pretty simple. Like it is some way what I said in the beginning about not having the packages and not using the many core features of the Oracle and stuff like that. So as we can see in the feature request uh, 856.060, uh, which is about to deprecate Oracle database in the 7.0, Supporting many database engines usually means either a code that is difficult to work with or a clean code that only uses the lowest common denominator of the features, which was exactly the case of the Zabbix. Up to this point, we tried to maintain a reasonable balance between these approaches, but this takes a lot of time and diverts our attention from main point of our product, the best monitoring solution of the world. This means that we should focus our development efforts solely on two database engines and their derivatives that are used most, MySQL and 
PostgreSQL. This will let us aim for even better performance and quality, less technical compromises, and benefit for both Zabbix users and Zabbix developers. Simple as that, because again, think from the perspective of uh, software developer. So think of the perspective of Zabbix in this case. It's not as simple as like, okay, I'm going to be the friendly dude and I'm going to support MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, Postgres, uh, CockroachDB, DynamoDB, and all databases in the world, because it's not that possible. You have just one code base, one Zabbix, right? And saying that you are supporting all of these databases means that your code has to be adopted to each of those databases. And it's difficult, as it is said, like, either you have a code that is very difficult to work at because like each part of the code, each functionality is tailored around like the database you might be running, or it's a very clean version where like everything is compatible with all the database versions. And it makes to skip like all of the interesting functionality that the database engine might have. So that's it. That's where the Oracle is gone. And uh, like, having a little bit of experience in the YouTube, most likely the people will end up in this video uh, from the Google, uh, from the Google searching something about like Zabbix Oracle, especially whenever it's going to be really removed and, and not supported anymore. But uh, to finish this video, I wanted to ask you uh, to open the YouTube and uh, find uh, whatever one of my videos, uh, e yeah, uh, let's open this one. So as you can see, I also have a second channel, by the way, and it's already 1.33 uh, thousand subscribers. So very good. Go click subscribe button and watch all the videos if that is something you enjoy. If not, then feel free to skip. But uh, basically, I would want you to subscribe to the newsletter, which is in it's actually also beneath the video you're watching right now. So in the description, tiny URL, subscribe to the newsletter. Why? Because I'm very slowly but still working on something very interesting for you if you are a Zabbix user. And also, as you noticed, I have this all new setup, right? And uh, I have almost everything that I need to actually do some some live streams, which I did also previously and really enjoyed them. But previously, it was very uncomfortable technology wise, like I was filming with a mobile phone, and then I need to use like the Wi Fi and then and, and, and the quality of the video is bad and so on. And so on. So long story short, it was very difficult. Right now I have a camera and, and microphone and everything. I just need Elgato Elgato cam link for 4k to use it as a webcam. And then we can do the live streams and talk with you all together about all sort of the stuff, Zabbix, not Zabbix, technology, work, life, whatever else. And uh, the most important thing, like whenever I will have everything set up, I need to notify you somehow that, hey, we're about to start this first stream or second stream or whatever. So sign up for the newsletter. And whenever I'm ready, like whenever I have something to share, either with that one interesting thing that I'm working on, or with the live streams or anything else interesting, I will use your email to send you information that hopefully will be interesting for you. So thank you for watching. See you later. Bye bye.